Hi, my friends. Today, I want to present you a new story. Enjoy watching it. Hi, my name is Jasmine. I'm 72 years old. The small cafe smelled of fresh bread and brewed coffee, a sharp contrast to the cool, misty autumn air outside. I shuffled in my frail hands trembling as I gripped the handle of my worn leather handbag. My clothes, though neat, were unmistakably old, worn down by years of use. I paused at the counter, my eyes scanning the menu. My voice, though quiet, carried the weight of a lifetime. Just a simple sandwich and some water, please, I requested. The cafe owner, Stephen, looked me up and down, his eyes narrowing. He was a tall man with slicked back hair and a permanent sneer, clearly not used to customers like me. With a quick glance around the room, he snickered. A couple seated by the window whispered and chuckled, their eyes flicking toward me. The noise in the cafe seemed to still as a few others joined in the ridicule, openly staring at me as though I didn't belong. A sandwich? Stephen mocked. You sure you can afford that, lady? I felt my cheeks burn, my fingers fidgeting with the buttons on my coat. I opened my purse, and the meager contents of loose coins spilled out onto the counter. Stephen's laugh cut through me like a knife. Maybe you should go somewhere else, he said coldly, his disdain palpable. We serve paying customers here. My vision blurred for a moment, and I felt a heavy weight pressing down on my chest. I hadn't felt this kind of humiliation in years, the quiet shame of being treated as though I were nothing. The cafe's warmth seemed to close in around me, suffocating me with the whispers and sneers. I reached down to gather my coins, my hands shaking, my pride in shreds. Just then, a voice broke through the cruel silence. That's enough. Fletcher, a man in his early fifties, well-dressed in a tailored suit, stood up from his table. His presence commanded attention as he approached the counter, his sharp green eyes locking onto Stevens. He pulled out his wallet, calmly placing a few bills down. I'll pay for her meal, Fletcher said, his tone unwavering, and you'll serve her with respect. Stephen blinked, taken aback by Fletcher's boldness. It's not about the money, mister. We have standards. Your standards are disgusting, Fletcher interrupted, his voice low but firm. Businesses are built by people, Stephen, and every person deserves respect, no matter their situation. For a moment, the cafe was still. Unsure whether to say something or remain silent, simply stared at the floor. I hadn't expected kindness. I hadn't expected anyone to stand up for me, a stranger in a place I'd never been before. Slowly, I lifted my head, my eyes meeting Fletcher's. Thank you, I whispered, my voice cracking slightly from emotion. Fletcher turned to me, offering a kind smile. No need to thank me. You deserve to be treated with dignity. He glanced down at my wrist, and his smile faltered. His eyes widened as they focused on the delicate silver bracelet dangling from my thin wrist. His breath caught, his mind racing back decades. That bracelet, he knew it. Excuse me, Fletcher stammered, his confident demeanor slipping for a moment. Where did you get that bracelet? I followed his gaze, my fingers brushing over the smooth, worn metal. This? It's all I have left from, before. A gift from someone I loved, many years ago. Fletcher swallowed hard, his heart pounding in his chest. That was no ordinary bracelet. It was the exact one he had given his brother's wife 32 years ago, before she disappeared without a trace. Could it be? Stephen, clearly uncomfortable, begrudgingly handed me my sandwich and water. Fletcher, still shaken, stepped aside to let me sit, but his mind was reeling. This couldn't be a coincidence. As I sat by the window, nibbling slowly on my sandwich, I felt Fletcher watching me with growing intensity. He had to know more. There was no way he could let this go. His brother's wife had vanished from their lives so long ago, and here, sitting before him, was a woman wearing the very bracelet that had once belonged to her. And so the quiet cafe, once filled with sneers and whispers, was now tense with the weight of unspoken connections and a past about to unravel. I could hardly keep my composure as I sat by the window, slowly eating the sandwich Fletcher had paid for. My mind spun with thoughts, and I kept glancing at the silver bracelet on my wrist, the delicate engraving unmistakable. It was a gift from someone I loved a long time ago, but I couldn't remember much about him. I stared out the window, my expression distant, my fingers grazing the bracelet absent-mindedly. I sensed Fletcher's eyes on me, and I knew he was struggling with something. I felt it deep in my bones. I had to know more about this connection. 
Taking a deep breath, he approached my table. May I sit? He asked softly, his tone gentler than before. I looked up, my eyes cloudy but kind, and nodded, motioning to the empty chair across from me. Of course. He sat down, his eyes falling once again to the bracelet. After a moment, he hesitated, choosing his words carefully. That bracelet, it's beautiful. Did you say it was a gift? I smiled faintly, glancing down at my wrist. Yes, it was. A gift from someone I love very much. He gave it to me a long time ago before. My voice trailed off, a shadow of sadness passing over my face. Before what? Fletcher pressed gently, though I could tell he was anxious. Before everything changed, I said softly. I don't remember much, to be honest. There was an accident minus 27 years ago, I believe. I was hit by a car. When I woke up, I didn't know who I was or where I'd come from. This bracelet is the only thing I had with me. I watched as his breath caught. You lost your memory? I nodded, meeting his eyes for a brief moment before looking back at the bracelet. It was terrifying at first. I had no name, no family, nothing to hold on to. But over the years I've made do. I never found out who I was before the accident. But I kept this bracelet because I knew it must have meant something important. I could see his throat tighten. This couldn't be a coincidence. I felt a wave of anxiety wash over me as I sensed he was on the verge of a revelation. Do you? Do you remember anything at all from before? He asked, struggling to keep his voice steady. I frowned, concentrating hard. Flashes, sometimes. I remember a name, Emmanuel. I think he was the man who gave me this bracelet. I loved him. I think he was my husband or maybe a fiancé. But beyond that, it's all a blur. I noticed his heart nearly stopping. Emmanuel was a name that held weight, but I had no idea what it truly meant in the context of my life. Leaning forward slightly, he whispered, Jasmine, I think I know who you are. My eyes widened and I felt my breath catch. What do you mean? He hesitated, the weight of his words pressing down on both of us. I think, I think you're my brother's wife. She disappeared 27 years ago and no one has seen or heard from her since. The bracelet you're wearing, it was hers. My hand flew to my chest, shock coursing through me. That, that can't be possible. I don't remember anything like that. I know it's hard to believe, he said gently, his voice filled with both hope and caution. But I can't ignore the evidence. The timeline fits. The bracelet, there's no mistaking it. You might be her, Jasmine. You might be Lillian. I leaned back in my chair, my mind spinning with the weight of his revelation. Could it be true? Could I really be the woman he believed me to be? I didn't know. But for the first time in years, I felt a glimmer of hope. Maybe, just maybe, the answers I had been searching for all these years were finally within reach. Fletcher watched me closely, his heart torn between disbelief and the possibility of a miracle. I could see it in his eyes. Looking at me, he said, Jasmine, it's been so long, but looking at you, I notice more and more similarities in your features and mannerisms to Lillian. Let me help you, he said, his voice soft but firm. We can figure this out together. Still reeling from everything, I simply nodded. The journey to uncovering the truth had only just begun. The following morning, I sat in the tiny apartment Fletcher had arranged for me, turning the bracelet over in my hands. He had left me the night before with promises to return after making a few calls, but the weight of his words still lingered in my mind. Lillian, could that truly be my name? Could I really be the woman Fletcher was so certain I was? I closed my eyes, trying to recall anything more than fleeting glimpses. The accident had erased so much, leaving only fragments of what felt like someone else's life, flashes of a man's face, the sound of laughter, a house by the sea, but nothing concrete. My memories were like broken glass, scattered across a vast, dark ocean. A sharp knock on the door startled me. I opened it to find Fletcher standing in the hallway, a thick file tucked under his arm. He gave me a cautious smile. Good morning, Jasmine. May I come in? I nodded, motioning for him to enter. My apartment was sparse but clean, furnished with only the essentials. I gestured to the lone armchair by the window. The Fletcher shook his head and remained standing. His face was serious and I could see a new tension in his shoulders. I've been thinking all night, he began, setting the file down on the small table. I spoke with a few people, old friends of my brother, people who were close to him and Lillian. I, I don't want to push you, Jasmine but we need to dig deeper. I 
frowned feeling the weight of his words. But what if I'm not her? What if this is all just a mistake? Fletcher sat down, leaning forward. I don't think it's a mistake. This is a photograph of Lillian, he said, pulling an old faded picture from the file and handing it to me. I stared at the image of a smiling woman standing next to a tall man, her dark hair framing her face. There was something hauntingly familiar about her, but I couldn't pinpoint why. That's Emmanuel, Fletcher continued, pointing to the man. My brother. He was a kind, thoughtful man, deeply in love with Lillian. They were happy together until she vanished. My hand trembled as I held the photograph. A strange sensation stirred within me, a mix of recognition and confusion. I swallowed hard. I wish I could remember more, but it's all so vague. Fletcher nodded, his voice softening. I understand, but there are other ways we can find out the truth. If you're willing, we can take this step by step. I met his gaze, seeing something in his eyes, an earnestness, a deep need for closure. And maybe, just maybe, I needed that closure too. I nodded slowly. I'm willing to try. Fletcher exhaled, clearly relieved. Thank you. We'll start with small things. I have a few ideas. Do you think? I paused, my voice barely a whisper. Do you think I'll ever get my memories back? Fletcher's face softened. I don't know, he admitted honestly. And no matter what, Jasmine, you're not alone in this. I nodded, feeling an unfamiliar warmth spread through my chest. The past might be a distant shadow, but for the first time, I wasn't facing it alone. The city felt both familiar and foreign as Fletcher and I walked through the busy streets. My heart raced with every step as if I was about to discover something long hidden but crucial. Fletcher had promised to help me recover my past, to guide me through places that might spark the memories that had eluded me for so many years. We stopped in front of an old bookstore, its sign worn and peeling. There was something about this place, a strange pull that tugged at the corners of my mind. I tilted my head, narrowing my eyes at the entrance. Have I been here before? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. Fletcher nodded, his eyes soft. You used to come here all the time. Emmanuel told me you'd spend hours in there, lost in books. I took a step closer, running my fingers along the faded wood of the doorframe. Something stirred inside me, like a whisper I couldn't quite make out. I can almost see it, I said, but it's blurry. I remember a man, Emmanuel. His name felt strange on my tongue, as though it had been years since I last said it aloud. And roses, why do I see roses? Fletcher's eyes lit up and he smiled gently. You loved roses. Your garden was full of them. Red ones, pink ones. You and Emmanuel used to sit among them every afternoon. I closed my eyes, trying to conjure the image. I could almost feel the soft petals beneath my fingertips, the scent of roses filling the air, but the memory slipped away before I could grasp it. We walked further into a quieter part of the city. My steps slowed as we neared a park with a worn out bench under a tall tree. I stopped suddenly, my breath catching in my throat. I'd been here before, I was sure of it. I sat here, I murmured, walking toward the bench. My fingers traced the rough wood, a strange familiarity washing over me. I was with Emmanuel, we were arguing. Fletcher stood beside me, his presence steady. You had disagreements, but you always came back here. It was your spot. I nodded slowly, my heart heavy with the ghost of a forgotten argument. He was leaving. I didn't want him to go. I was afraid. Fletcher watched me closely. He was going on a business trip. You hated being apart from him. I could see it now, sitting here with him, the tension between us, the worry in my chest. But there was something else, something deeper. What was I so afraid of? As we walked on, the streets grew more familiar, though I couldn't say how. Little fragments of memories flickered through my mind, flashes of conversations, moments of laughter, a lingering sadness. Each step seemed to pull back the veil a little more. Finally, we stopped in front of an old cafe, the paint chipped and the windows dusty. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest. I had been here. I was sure of it. I came here often, I whispered, clutching Fletcher's arm. I met someone here. No, I was waiting for someone. Emmanuel, Fletcher said softly. You used to meet him here. I stared at the cafe, tears welling in my eyes. I'm starting to remember, I said, my voice shaking. It's all coming back, piece by piece. 
Fletcher placed his hand gently on my shoulder. Look at there, Jasmine. One step at a time. I nodded, swallowing hard. The memories were fragile, like delicate pieces of glass I was afraid to shatter. But they were mine. And they were returning, slowly, painfully, but they were returning. The next morning, the sun felt softer, warmer, as if welcoming my new chapter. I stood in front of the small apartment Fletcher had arranged for me. The building was modest, yet it felt grand compared to the worn-down places I had lived in for decades. The keys jingled in my trembling hand as I hesitated at the door. Are you ready? Fletcher asked gently from beside me. His calm presence grounded me, reminding me that I wasn't alone in this. I nodded, taking a deep breath. I think so, I whispered. The door creaked open, revealing a bright, cozy space. The smell of fresh paint mixed with the scent of blooming flowers placed on the windowsill. It felt new. It felt like a place where I could start again. I stepped inside, my eyes scanning the room as if it were a dream I wasn't sure I belonged in. I hope it's all right, Fletcher said, watching my reaction. It's not much, but I thought you might like something peaceful, something you can make your own. It's perfect, I said softly, my voice catching in my throat. More than I ever imagined, I walked slowly to the window, looking out at the bustling street below. For the first time in years, I felt safe, like the weight of my wandering had been lifted from my shoulders. Fletcher smiled, relieved to see me happy. There's more, he said, stepping closer. I didn't just get you this apartment. I bought you a little flower shop downtown. It's small, but I thought, given how much you love flowers, it might be a way for you to find joy again. My hand flew to my mouth in shock. A flower shop? Fletcher, I, I don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything, he replied gently. It's just a way for you to build something, something that's yours, a new beginning. Tears filled my eyes as I turned to face him, overwhelmed by the kindness he had shown me. Why are you doing all of this for me? I asked, my voice barely a whisper. You've already done so much. Fletcher looked at me, his expression soft but serious. I told you, Jasmine, it's for my brother. But it's also for you. You deserve to live, not just survive. And I believe you can find something beautiful in this new chapter. I felt a rush of gratitude, words failing me as I embraced Fletcher tightly. For years, I had been drifting through life, feeling like I was merely a shadow of someone I used to be. But now there was hope. There was a future. As I pulled away, I gave him a small, trembling smile. Thank you, Fletcher, for everything. He nodded, his eyes warm. Jasmine, welcome back to the family. Emmanuel would be happy about all of this if he were alive. 